Good afternoon. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Yixi, Yixi Lu. Thank you, Yixi. Okay, any questions before we start? Before we formally start? Everything okay? So, uh, yeah. Today's plan, uh, basically we will finish a uh, multiple level of feedback queue. So I think last time uh, we had uh, a few questions related to how to do scheduling, consider considering both performance and also fairness. So particularly when we talk about, when we talk about um, performance, we talk about turnaround time. When we talk about um, fairness, we talk about response time. Um, then um, generally speaking, to optimize turnaround time, we can schedule shortest uh, job first. Uh, if we want to optimize response time, then we can use the round robin uh, time slicing based approach. Basically, we uh, assign a time slice for each job and uh, do scheduling in a round robin manner. Okay. So um, that's summarize what we have discussed, right? Okay. Uh, this week's plan, okay. So first, let me go to our uh, cost uh, homepage. Uh, I will finish the scattering, CPU scattering, uh, and the tutor will discuss uh, multiple level feedback queue, okay, in this week, uh, in this week's lab. So uh, basically this week is more on concept. Uh, so we will, we will discuss how to um, do multiple level feedback queue. Tutor already prepare uh, very good material. Please do attend the uh, this week's lab. Basically, um, this is uh, related to your homework three. If you, if you have no issue after the lab, then you should have no problem to finish assignment three. Okay. So uh, yeah, so in the class, in today's class, uh, let me uh, finish uh, multiple level feedback. Here. Okay. So uh, yeah, first let's briefly talk about uh, where we are now. So we are still in the process and CPU scheduling. So last time we talked about turnaround time, right? Completion time minus uh, arrival time, which is turnaround time. So uh, basically we talk about shortest job first approach. So use this very simple example to motivate uh, what is uh, why this is uh, good right? for the turnaround time. Then uh, uh, certainly when we introduce preemption, which means uh, we can do rescheduling among the execution of a process, then we change it to sort of time to completion first, STFC. So 
Generally speaking, this is a shortest job first. However, because we can do preemption, then uh, it we will look at a, a, a job then time to completion, right? So this time becomes important. So it becomes shortest time to completion first uh, approach. Okay. Then another approach, another perform the metrics is a uh, response time. So basically, uh, first the running time minus uh, arrival time. Okay. So to optimize this one, we can do round robin scheduling. So as I mentioned before, we have a time slice. Then uh, just to do schedule the each job based on this time slash. After uh, use up, then schedule another one in a round robin manner. So we also talk about some uh, uh, trade off. Then finally, uh, we also need to consider I/O because uh, when we do I/O, CPU is idle, so it's better we interleave our uh, I/O operation with computation. Okay, in this way, we can better utilize CPU. So uh, then we go to uh, second topic. This is a very widely used uh, approach called multiple level feedback queue. Okay. So also uh, the inventor obtained the tooling word because of this. Okay, so this is why last time, uh, I think some students asked the questions, say, how to optimize both turn around time and respond time. Uh, I told you, you guys ask a uh, tooling a word type of question, right? So you guys have potential to obtain tooling a word. So let's look at tooling a word question. Right? Okay, so the the question here is uh, we we want to design a scheduler. Uh, then this scheduler can learn from the past to predict the future. Okay. Then, uh, more specifically, okay, so everyone can see that. Okay, I learn from the past. I can predict the future, right? So we have to evaluate. So is this uh, prediction accurate, right? So objective, we want to optimize turnaround time. So basically, as we mentioned before, we can run shorter job first. At the same time, we also want to minimize response time without uh, previous knowledge of a job length. Okay, I think this is a, uh, the focus of a previous lecture. A lot of students ask, so, so should we, how, how can we know the job length? We don't know the execution time, how to, how to know that, okay? But uh, you can see that we want to minimize response time, then we don't need this knowledge, okay? So maybe you say that it's impossible because um, last time we mentioned, they contradict with each other. So if we want to optimize turnaround time, then if you want to run shorter job first, then definitely you cannot minimize response time, right? So vice versa, okay? So, uh, then people think about it, okay? The idea of this solution is simple. Okay, if we have no idea, if we have uh, no knowledge about the execution time of a process, how about we make some assumption in the beginning? Okay, so the idea is that, okay, suppose we can have several level of queue, for example, level one, level two, level three, level four. So uh, suppose I use a Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, represent. Okay. Then uh, if a job enter into the system ready to be scheduled, we will put this onto the topmost queue, for example, here, queue four. Then this job, for example, job A, 
Well, be, because I put this job on the topmost queue, and I assign the topmost priority for the topmost queue. Then if we go to the Q3, which is lower than Q4, then the priority is lower. So generally speaking, when we go to the lower level queues, the priority become uh, uh, lower and lower. Okay. Then when we do scheduling in the beginning, if a job enter in the system, so we assume this job can be finished in very short time period. Okay. So, so we put this onto the topmost queue with high priority. Then uh, we, we assign a time slice here because we assume this job will be finished uh, in very short time. The reason is that we, we because the reason we put this, this job onto the topmost queue because we, we assume this job is the shortest job. Okay. However, it may not be the shortest job. This process may not be finished if I give a very short time slice. Okay. So if a, a job A use up his time slice, you know, top most of the queue, then we know, oh, this, uh, this is definite. After uh, a particular time slice, for example, one time slice, okay, at this level, at uh, Q4, for each job, we give one time slice. So after one time slice, oh, this guy didn't finish, okay. So it's okay. So at least we know this job cannot be finished in one time slice, which is a, a short time uh, in terms of our system. Okay, so we move this uh, job into next queue, okay? Then give in next queue, the priority is lower. However, we assign longer time slice. For example, if we schedule this job A run again on Q3, then we will assign time slice two to A. So in other words, um, if a job is put onto a lower, lower queue with the lower priority. So we, we don't, we may not have a lot of opportunity to schedule this job. However, if we schedule this job, we will give his a longer time slice. Okay, so generally speaking, that's, a, that's a, our idea for one job, okay? Then you may ask, how about if we have um, we have multiple jobs at the same time enter into the system. For example, at the same time, we have A and B both enter into the system. Then here, if A and B have the same priority, then uh, we, will give him, we will give them the same time slice, which is one, and schedule them in a round robin manner. Okay, generally speaking, if this is shorter job, then we can finish. And if they have the same priority, then we optimize the response time also. Okay, this is a general idea. Then if we cannot finish, then we move down, move down, move down. Then we generally speaking, generally we know oh, this job is not a um, um, uh, may need a very long execution time. So yeah, so we should schedule other job first. Okay, something like that. Okay, so let me go through this uh, uh, algorithm. Then um, you you can understand better. But the general idea is like this. Okay. So uh, first, multiple level feedback queue has a number of distinct queues. Okay. So as I mentioned, okay, for example, in this case, we may have four level queues and. Each queue is assigned a different priority level. Okay. Uh, then a job that is ready to run is on a single queue. So generally speaking, we cannot put one job onto multiple queue. We can only put one job onto one queue. Okay. 
then uh, our first rule is that a job on a higher queue is chosen to run. So our scheduler will look at all jobs onto a different queue. Okay. However, we, we will schedule the job on the higher queue. For example, in this case, suppose I have an ABC job, AB on the Q4, Q4 is topmost queue. Then I will schedule A or B because A and B are on the uh, Q4, which is the uh, highest queue. Okay, so then uh, if in the same queue, we have multiple jobs, then we will use round robin scheduling among those jobs. So generally speaking, in this case, if we have A and B, then we will schedule A uh, for running a time slice, then run B. So, so for each each queue, we have a, a predefined time slice. Okay, so generally, you can see here, we have row one and row two. Row one is that if priority A is greater than priority B, A run. Okay, we schedule A to run. So that means every time when we need to do rescheduling, we will go to the topmost queue, find the, uh, it's not a, it's not a topmost queue. Basically, we want to find the task with the highest priority, uh, which is in higher queue. Okay. Then if rule two, if priority A and priority P are equal, then A or B, A and B will be run in round robin manner. Okay, so basically we also optimize uh, response time. Okay. okay, so that's first one. Okay, then our assumption may not be true. In the beginning, we assume this job can be finished uh, in very short time. So we put this job onto the topmost queue. So, however, uh, after this job use up his time slice on a particular queue, it still need more time. Okay, in this case, we can change the priority based on the observed behavior. Okay, so uh, we generally speaking, we have uh, two kind of uh, situation we need to handle. The first one is that we give a time slice to a job. This job use up all times, okay, for a particular time slice, then still cannot finish. Then we should say, oh, this this is a is a, is a longer job. So reduce his priority, put put this job onto the lower level, lower level queue. Okay. Another another one is those interactive job. So basically, this kind of a job repeatedly give up the CPU when waiting for the IO, okay? So, so generally speaking, this may be our keyboard. So you want to input those uh, words. So for those job, actually response, responsiveness is very important. So basically we will say that, okay? So for this job, because you give, you use a little bit of time, then you give up CPU for IO, then we can keep your priority. So that's general rule. So uh, then uh, this uh, this example this this example this example shows uh, 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 at a particular level. Suppose we have a eight level queue. You can see Q one to Q Q eight here. Then at a particular level, we may have a job A B C D. Okay, the first in first out based on the first in first out. Then at this moment, if we want to do scheduling, we, we should do, we should schedule B to run, something like that. Okay, I noticed there are some questions uh, from the chat box. Don't worry, I will go back to answer your question later after I finish this uh, multiple level feedback. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, we need to uh, adjust the priority, okay? So rule three, 
when a job enters the system, it is placed at the highest priority queue with the highest priority. Okay? Of course, when, when, when a job enters into the system, we have to follow this uh, first thing, first thought, right? Because that's a queue. It's just uh, based on the time we just uh, enter and queue. Right. When you enter, actually, you're already in false order. Rule for A, if a job use up the entire time slice while running a particular level of queue, his priority is reduced. That is, it will move down one queue. So as we mentioned, each queue has a priority and also a predefined time slice. So if a job on a particular level queue is scheduled and use up all time slots assigned, then we know uh, this job may need more time. So his priority is reduced, then move down to one level queue. Okay. Uh, rule for B, if a job give up CPU before the time slice is used up, then it stay at the same priority level. So generally speaking here, this is an interactive job. So basically we say, oh, because you give up CPU, then uh, we may keep you on this, uh, 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 on this level of Q with a higher priority. Okay, so let's look at an example. Suppose here we have job A entering into the system. So we have three level of Q. Uh, in QA, uh, we run 10 millisecond because this time slice is 10 millisecond. Okay. Then, uh, sorry, in, in the beginning, we put this uh, job onto the Q2, right, topmost Q, then run 10 millisecond. Then after that, we, because this job has used up the time slice assigned, so we move down this job onto the Q1 with a lower priority now, okay? Then use up, the time slice assigned on Q1, we move down to Q0. Okay, then at this moment, because no other job in the system, we schedule this job repeatedly to run. Each time is 10 milliseconds. Okay, so based on the previous uh, uh, rules, uh, this is the case for single task. Okay, then uh, this is uh, related to the rule of 4B. So suppose we have an interactive job. Okay. Suppose we have an interactive job B, which is a short running interactive job, only around 20 milliseconds. Okay. Then job A is a long running CPU intensive job. Okay, so uh, after job A put onto the bottom Q, Q0, then at a particular time, then uh, job A, uh, job, job B enter into the system. Okay, at this moment, I suppose. Okay, it's at 100. Then because job B at this moment, a schedule look at, okay, we have two jobs, A and B, right, in the system. So uh, B has higher priority because B on the Q2 with high priority. So B will be scheduled to run, okay? So B, after use up his time slice, B will move down to Q1. Okay, at this moment, we will look at, okay, uh, we have job A and job B. B on Q1, A on Q0. Okay, B has high priority. Schedule B run again. Okay, so 
Uh, then after that B finish, then we continue to run A. Okay, that's the situation. Uh, so then let's look at another example here. So uh, yeah, let me give me a second. Okay, so what about because I could not see the what about IO, right? So uh, suppose we have a long running CPU intensive job A and an interactive job that repeatedly um, perform IO, then uh, also need a CPU for one millisecond, for example. Right? In this case, in this case, you can see here. Suppose A is a long running job. A already put onto the bottom because A uses up his uh, time slots, um, Q2, Q1, then put onto the Q0. Then uh, based on our rule for B, then job B, job B will be uh, continuously kept on Q2 because uh, time slice is 10 milliseconds. However, a job B only use one millisecond, then job B give up the CPU. So after job B give up CPU, then we can schedule uh, A to run. Okay, then later when A finish 10 millisecond, because A actually uh, use up his time slots on Q0, then we do, we, we do rescheduling. So when we do scheduling, we suppose, okay, suppose uh, B after issue the IO, IO finished, then B is ready to run, then we, we run B again, okay? So basically you can see this, this way, actually we can fully um, interleave our computation and our I/O. Okay, so that's a, that's a good example right, in this case. So we do have an issue. I, I noticed there are some questions. Okay, so let, let me finish slides. I will go back to answer your question. Okay. So we do have some issue here. So first the issue is the starvation. Starvation. So if there are too many interactive jobs in the system. Then long running job, long time running job, will never receive any CPU time. So basically, a long running time, because they have lowest priority, then those interactive jobs always kept on the uh, topmost queue with highest priority. So they may fully occupy the whole system, whole CPU. So we don't have any chance to schedule those long running jobs. I, I will show example you, you can see here. So second issue is we may have some uh, uh, job want to gain the scheduler. For example, I can design a, a program after running 99% of the time slots, then I issue an IO operation. Then scheduler say, okay, oh, this is a nice guy, okay? Uh, give up the CPU, then we should keep this job onto the topmost queue. Okay, so then of course, then after a while, then I, I keep on the topmost queue, I can always, uh, to be scheduled with the highest priority, right? So basically after I finish the IO operation, then I, I, I may gain, regain the control to, to be scheduled, okay? So in this way, if I gain the scheduler, I may gain a higher percentage of CPU time, okay? So every time I just, uh, after, before I use up my time slots, I just give up, okay? Then I say, oh, I, I have IO. So, then after a while, I will go back, okay? Say, I am ready now. 
then I can always game the schedule. Another issue is that a program may change his behavior over time. For example, so our program may, may in, in, in the beginning, maybe we need to load some data, right? Then we do computation. Then after that, we will do IO again. We, we, because we process data, right? So basically we, we just load a lot of data, collect, collect a lot of data. Then after a while, then we, then we do computation, right? So then during this period, we may change, totally change our behavior, okay? So you can see in this situation, if we already determine this program is CPU bounded, require a lot of computation time, then this job will be put on the top uh, bottom tier with the lowest priority. But later, it changes the behavior, become IO bounded. I don't need a lot of CPU time. However, it's not, I, we cannot schedule you to run, right? So basically this may not be good. Okay, so this is a well, this is a why we want to introduce uh, one more rule uh, called priority boost. So the idea is very simple because the pro a process may change his behavior. And also because uh, a job may be stopped, a long running job may not have a chance to be run. So we, have, we may have starvation situation. So after a time period, as we will move all job in the system to the topmost queue. Of course, here we have to uh, give an order, right? When we put all jobs onto the topmost queue, we have to give the order who will run first. But generally speaking, uh, we will see that uh, after a while, then let's restart our game. Everyone has this highest priority. so everyone will be scheduled in a round robin manner. Then after a while, then we, uh, some shorter job will keep on the topmost queue, then longer job will go to go down, okay? But after a, a longer time period with S, we will do this uh, priority boost. Okay, so in terms of starvation, you can see it's very possible, suppose, um, we have uh, two short running, two short running interactive job B and C here, B and C. You can see B and C here, right? Okay. So, uh, when, when we have A run, use up his time slice and go to the bottom, then uh, B and C enter into the system. So B and B after we run B for, uh, for example, one millisecond, then B give up the CPU because B need to do IO operation, okay? Then C is on, on the queue. So C will be scheduled in a round robin manner, right? C, C will be scheduled to run, then after one millisecond, during this time period, uh, during this time period, B has finished his IO operation. B is ready to run. C at the same time, after do the CPU, after do the CPU uh, computation, C require IO, okay? So then next, we will schedule B to run again. Okay, then you can see here, if we have two interactive job, shorter running interactive job B and C, B and C will dominate the whole system. Then A will have no chance to be scattered. So that's the issue we talk about, starvation, right? So this is why 
if we can introduce a priority boost, then we can solve the problem. The idea here that uh, after, for example, 100 millisecond, we will uh, reschedule. We, 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 will, we will do the boost, right? A priority boost. So every job will be placed onto the topmost queue. Then we will have the same, uh, because ABC have the same priority. Now they can do, they can be scheduled. You know, round robin man. Okay, so remember we have three issues, right? Second issue is um, uh, a program, a process may want may want to game the scheduler before use up time slots, give up CPU, right? So. Uh, to solve this problem, we change our rule 4A and 4B into rule 4. We revise this rule. So the idea also is very simple. So basically, uh, if, you, if, uh, uh, if a process want to gain the scheduler, then maybe we can assign a maximum time a process can stay at a particular queue. We call it uh, allotment, time allotment. Okay. So once a job use up his time allotment at a given level, okay, regardless how many times it has given up CPU, then his priority is reduced. Move down, move down on, move down onto the lower queue. Okay, so what, what is a time allotment? So is this why this is a uh, why what what is different between time allotment and time slice? So I think maybe you you may ask this kind of question, right? So uh, time slice should be smaller than a time allotment. So generally speaking, uh, time allotment is the longest, the maximum possible time a job can stay on a queue. This time allotment may, can, may be a multiple of a time slice. So for example, in this case, uh, our time slice maybe is, um, uh, I don't know here, maybe is, uh, uh, suppose we have two millisecond or one millisecond. So our, our allotment can be three, right? So if uh, this uh, job use up his time slots, then no matter how many times this job gave up the CPU, that I only count the total time. I total time onto this queue, a particular job can stay is three milliseconds. So I will lower this job onto the next queue. Okay, so that's a basic idea. So in this way, actually, uh, e before, if we don't have this rule, then this uh, smart process may give up the CPU in a very uh, short time period. Then scanner say, okay, this guy is a shorter job, give up CPU. Right? So we keep this job onto the topmost queue. Then this job can gain a um, more percentage of CPU time. So right now, if uh, this process give up CPU, then I will count the total time this uh, job stayed on a particular queue, then no matter what, later I will move down. Uh, if this uh, job use up his time allotment, which is the total time, maybe, maybe consist of several times less, then we will move down this job into the lower level Q. Okay, so that, that means, okay, it, you cannot get benefit if you want to uh, game the schedule. Okay, so uh, uh, another issue is we can 
uh, tuning our multiple level queue uh, with this uh, uh, execution time slice. Okay. So generally speaking, the high priority queue will have shorter time slice. Uh, the reason also is very clear because in our a higher priority queue, we assume those jobs can be finished uh, very fast. They are shorter job, right? So then how to determine that shorter job? Then we give the shorter time slash. So if we cannot finish, right, then it will become a longer running time, right? So then longer running time, we are put into the lower uh, priority queue. Then for the lower priority queue, to be fair, then if we schedule this job to run, then we give the longer time slice, for example, 100 milliseconds. Okay, so you can see here, uh, suppose A, uh, uh, A enter the, the system, then uh, later B also enter into the system. Then, uh, uh, basically, A will move down. However, when A move down to Q1, then you can see we can increase the execution time to uh, 20 milliseconds from 10 milliseconds, right? Then 40 milliseconds onto the uh, lower stomach. Okay, in this way, basically, we have a kind of a. Uh, so, so, so we can, we can satisfy this. Uh, um, so first we want to optimize the turnaround time, right? So uh, generally speaking, we can do that, right? So however, if, if a system is idle, then we can schedule some lower priority task. When we schedule those lower priority tasks, then we can also assign more time uh, for those jobs to run. Okay, so uh, I guess that's all for this uh, algorithm. Then uh, before I go to talk about some uh, uh, implementation, then let's summarize this uh, multiple level feedback here. Uh, first one, first rule. If priority A is greater than priority B, then A wrong, B will not wrong. Okay. Second rule, if priority A is equal to priority B, then A and B run in round, round robin manner. Okay, so generally speaking, uh, we have uh, several queues with different priority. Then we will always schedule job with the higher priority, uh, which means we'll go to the uh, the higher, we go to the queue with the high priority. If we have job, then we just uh, run that job first. Right? Rule three, when a job enter the system, it is placed at the highest priority queue. So every job and when entering into the system, we assume this job uh, will be finished very fast. So we put this job onto the highest, uh, highest uh, queue with the highest priority. Okay. Rule four, once a job use up his time allotment at a given level, then uh, as I mentioned, okay, this time allotment is a maximum execution time, maximum time we allow a job stay on a particular queue. Okay. It may consist of multiple time slots. It, it definitely bigger than one time slice, okay? Then regardless how many times it has give up CPU, its priority is reduced. So basically we don't care about this give up CPU anymore. Then if uh, this job use up the total, the maximum time, then we will uh, put this job into the next level queue, which means we will reduce his priority. Then after some time period, so this S is usually is longer than, is a, in terms of our uh, scheduling, this is a longer time. So after a while, then we move our job in the system to the topmost queue, okay? So I know this is not clear, okay? Um, yeah, so 
tutor will present your one example. Then next uh, next week, maybe I will utilize his example to show this again. But I don't want to use his example uh, right now uh, because uh, he spent a lot of time to design this example, right? So I, I cannot uh, say, okay, let, let's appreciate his uh, effort. Right? Um, but uh, anyway, so any questions at this moment? I, I, look, I, I noticed there are some questions from chatbot. So I'm ready to answer some questions. Uh, we also, it's uh, around the time for break. So how about we have a five minute break break. Then after the break, I will answer your question. And also I may show you some uh, simple example. Okay, five minutes break. So let me first uh, post the uh, recording. Okay, let's continue. Uh, let me copy some question. So if you have any other question, then you can please, uh, you can input into the chat box or you can ask it directly. Okay, let me copy those questions. Uh, the first question, if Q4, if Q4 always have jobs to do, the CPU will not run the job in other queues. Uh, you are right. <laughs> That's exactly right. You are right, right? So basically here, I think the question is that uh, because this is related to a particular example, Q4 has the highest priority, right? So basically, you are right. We do have starvation. So uh, if we always have job onto the topmost queue, then CPU will not run the other job. Okay. So if uh, the job uh, uh, move down onto the lower lower queue, then they may not have chance to be scheduled. So this is the why we want to have priority pri pr pr priority boost, right? So basically, after a time period S, uh, put all job onto the top most queue. So in this way, we can guarantee. <laughs> so our job have uh, some, at least have some, some times less because we put them onto the top. Right? So I hope I answer your question. Second question, what if B has longer running time and will eventually go to Q0? Will system keep running job B or switch to run uh, job A? So I, I think maybe this question need to be put into the uh, context. So uh, what's the question here? What, what, is, what is the context here? So generally speaking, uh, yes, if B has a longer execution time, B will eventually go to Q0, right? So then if B, if say if B is on the lowest, lowest Q, suppose, okay? Then A is coming and uh, enter uh, and uh, will be the is coming and uh, 
is put on the top most queue, then it will be scheduled. Right? So uh, may maybe I didn't under understand your question, but uh, generally speaking, yeah, so it's, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sir, sir, sir. Uh, this question is my question. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I saw your slide and uh, firstly, a job A is running on Q0 and then uh, B coming at the most uh, highest priority and because he has a longer, if he has a longer runtime and eventually go to Q0, will the uh, computer will switch to run job A at Q0 before or keep running the job B? Okay, now I understand your question, thank you. Okay, so the question is that uh, basically this uh, this can be applied into uh, any level of Q. So it's not only the lowest, lowest level, right? So generally speaking, on one level, we have we already have one job. Then now, uh, a new job will be placed onto this queue, right? So generally speaking, we will, because this is a queue, right? So when we have a job enter into this queue, we will just put this job onto the queue. Then we will, for example, in this case, to specifically answer your question, a and B. So B is placed on the bottom queue, right? So B and A, B and A have B and A have the same priority. So then we will use utilize that our rule. If B and A have the same priority. B and A will be scheduled in a schedule to run in a round robin manner, right? So B and A will be scheduled to run in a round RR manner, right? Round robin manner. Okay. In terms of uh, uh, B run or A run, okay, depends on the situation, right? So if uh, a just steals up his time class, then maybe we will run B. Oh, oh maybe we still run, uh, but the round robin way, right? After we finish by to run another one, right? Generally speaking, yeah. So I hope I answer your question. Yixi, did I answer your question? Yeah. So Inho asked a, a question, uh, yeah. So let's see Inho's question. In some example, we saw job A in Q2. In some uh, example, job B at Q0 with no other vehicle. Is this because of previous running time of job B? Yes. Yes, you are right. Okay. So th those examples just uh, to, uh, to show you that uh, in some cases, uh, because some job has run for a long time, uh, then basically we may put this job onto a particular queue, then we have a new job come and so on. Yeah. So uh, I hope I answer your question. I think Herman asked uh, the job needs. Uh, I don't know, I don't understand this question. So maybe you have answered the question. <laughs> so I hope. Okay, so uh, let me, I, I find more questions. So let me copy more question. Yeah. Okay, I, I think I answer some question. So yeah, so from Herman's question. How does CPU know or calculate how long the job need? So generally speaking, the question is that how to define, how to define the time slice 
for each queue right, in the system. So generally speaking, this is a tuning time. So you have to tune this uh, tune, tune the this time, tune the time slice. So uh, you can see from the system, we, we do have some uh, kind of general time you can use, but in order to do a better job, you have to tune your system to for each level queue, how long it takes, and so how many how many levels the queue, and so. So those are parameters you need to tune in order to get a better performance. So I hope I answer your question. So Hai Tao, Hai Tong, Hai Tong asked question, how to determine the number of queue? Yeah, so this is exactly the question. I think we can post this question one and this question two together. So uh, basically, uh, we need to we need to tune the system to decide those numbers those parameters but uh, uh, we do have some practice so basically we can uh, based on those uh, um, experience but in order to get the best performance you have to uh, tune those numbers for your workload, maybe. Yeah, so similar question, right? How, how we define the time slot for different level, right? So uh, this will be determined by the system of being. Yeah, this uh, question three also is, uh, is a part of uh, uh, this uh, one, two, three question, right? So how to, how to determine those numbers, how to determine those uh, parameters, uh, system of the mean uh, can decide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You see, see, I answer his questions. So the next question: uh, When a new job come, will the Running job finish the time to select first. I just switch to yeah. So this is a very good question. So the question is that when a new job come, so will the running job will be will we preempt the running job or we wait until the running job to be finished? So so remember this is a, the definition we define time slash. Okay, cannot be broken. Right? <laughs> cannot be broken. So uh, except my case, okay? Except, yeah, I mean, actually all those things is determined, all those things are determined by us. But generally speaking, uh, time slash cannot be broken, which means we need to wait, right? We need to wait until all jobs, uh, the, the running job finish with time slash. Okay. Before we do the scattering. Okay. So, uh, but uh, see, we do have a priority boost. So that priority, that priority boost may not fit into this scenario. So uh, in our in our in our exercise, basically, uh, in your homework, then uh, our rule is that uh, that one has the highest priority. <laughs> <laughs> so after this time period as for example 100 millisecond 100 millisecond uh, then this one can stop all running job stop running job and do the rescatter okay so in terms of how to do it then we will give you a specific rule then make uh, the system behavior deterministic scheduling behavior deterministic okay. but generally speaking Generally speaking, we will do scheduling based on time slash. So at each level, if we schedule this job wrong, then we will run until this job 
to finish the time slice they assign. Okay, then we do scattering. So I hope I answer your question. Okay. Yeah, uh, looks like no other question. Yeah, so any other questions? No question, huh? So uh, yeah, I, I, I really like tutor's uh, <laughs> example. So let, let me just play a little bit, okay? So you guys can get the detail explanation later, right? So I, after that, I will continue. So actually he prepared a video here. So you can see here. So uh, let me just uh, stop a little bit. So in the beginning, in the beginning, so how, how to stop here? Oh, here. So you, you can see this is a given. You can see we have a uh, five process. Then uh, we have PID, which is, is used to identify different process. So before I continue, uh, can you guys see my screen? So can you, can you guys see this video here? I show demo. Demo of uh, multiple level feedback scanning. Okay, sorry. I just sometimes I just forget to uh, to 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 ask you guys about this. So uh, anyway, so if you see any uh, abnormal, abnormal uh, situation, uh, please let me know. Yeah. You you can you can see here we have uh, okay maybe maybe let me very smart. Yeah, okay. Uh, you, you, you can see here, basically we have process here. We have five process here. Then we have PID arrival time, execution time. Uh, generally speaking, we suppose we know this, this is a game, right? Then we have three queue here. Then for each queue allotment, you can see the first number, 10 is our time slice, which means if uh, a job is uh, on this queue, then the running time is 10, okay? The allotment is 30, which means a uh, job uh, in Q3 uh, can be scheduled at most three times, okay? Generally speaking, okay? So 30, right? Then, then time slice for Q2 is 40. The allotment is 80, which means twice, right? In Q2 and so on. So uh, the how, how to do scattering. So based on our uh, multiple level feedback queue, okay? Let, let, me, let me run a little bit, okay? So at time 10, at time 10, so let's say, because arrival time at 10, we have two jobs arrive. So which is one, Zero two three and uh, thirty six. Okay, so here <laughs> we have to determine the order because we want to have a uh, determ deterministic behavior. So basically, for this example, so if two jobs arrive at the same time, then we will uh, put the job with a. Uh, uh, smallest PID into the queue first. Okay, don't ask why, because we want to make it become deterministic, right? So we have to have order. So, so basically we see that uh, smallest PID first, if they arrive at the same time, okay? So this is what you can see when we, when we uh, at the time, at time 10, we have two process, 36 and one, one zero, when zero two three arrive, then we will put the 36 first, then uh, one oh two three a second, okay? Then we will do scheduling, right? You can see that we will do scheduling because, because process 36 are on the topmost queue and also uh, is the first one. Okay, first thing, first out, our queue, right? So we will schedule 36 to, to run. 
then uh, 36 execution time also is 10. Then this time slice for this queue is 10. So after we finish uh, 36, basically, so, so schedule is here. Did, did, did you guys see the schedule? Yeah, let, let, let me, let me, let me, yeah. Where is my, where, where's my drawing to? Somehow I could not find it. Yeah. So schedule is here, right? You guys see the schedule is here. So basically 36 is scheduled at 10. Running time is 10, right? So finish, right? So then uh, from the from the system, because we finish, so we remove uh, 36 from system, okay? Then we schedule 1023 at, at this time because there's, this is the only job also on the topmost queue. Then after val, see, okay, I, I think here it's interesting, okay? So maybe maybe I, I finish this part, I will, I will uh, move on to talk about some, uh, to go, go back to the slide. So I will let tutor to continue. So uh, you can see here, because at this moment we only have this job. So we will run, we schedule the first time, the second time, right? Yeah. Then the third time, right? Then after that, after three times, we already use up the time all allotment. Time allotment is 30. So we move down uh, this process onto the Q2. Bec no matter what, if you use up your time allotment, then you have to, we have to lower the priority of this process. So that, that's our rule, right? Then continue. And here we, we do scheduling, then we have new job come and so on. Then we do scheduling again and again. So, uh, this is a very good example. Okay, you guys play this this example. So it's round robin manner. You can see on the topmost queue. Then, uh, then the schedule is here. Then I hope uh, after you go through this example, then you understand the multiple level feedback here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, because uh, tutors spend a lot of time to prepare this, <laughs> I think he will explain this in a better manner than me. So I will leave this to him okay, on our um, tutorial, this, uh, this week's lab. So the slides and uh, um, the examples, um, uh, description and so on, have been released from the Blackboard. Okay. So let, let me go back to uh, continue to talk a little bit more related to the scattering. Okay. Yeah, let me first clean up here. Okay, so next I want to talk about proportional sharing. Okay. So uh, before I continue, can you guys see my slides? Part three, scattering, proportional sharing. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, yeah, so uh, first, yeah, where is my, yeah, let me clean up here. Uh, use my pen here, okay. So the, the, the basic idea here is we want to get the fairness. We want to really give the uh, give give each job guarantee each job obtain a certain percentage of CPU time. So of course in the beginning we have to define so how many percentage uh, for this job. Then if you give this percentage, which means to say okay you want to you want to give this uh, a percentage. This is a fair to each job, then this scheduler will see that, okay? So I will follow your defined 
percentage, then I will guarantee, I will guarantee, okay, you can run this certain percentage based on the current task, okay? So here, actually we don't optimize for turnaround time or response time. We only optimize this one, fairness, right? Because we already, in the beginning, we already see that this is a fair, uh, you you have a two t you have twenty percent you have twenty percent you have forty percent. Uh, then how to determine this percentage? Because the system or the mean already assign those percentage. So our scheduling our scheduler will guarantee this percentage can be reached. Yeah. Then how to do it? Okay. The this this algorithm is very simple. So basically. Uh, we can, this is from a one paper in the beginning, they call ticket. Um, so basically we can represent the share of the resource that a process should receive, we call it a ticket, okay? So the percent of the ticket represent his share of the system resource in question. So for example, suppose we have two process, two processes A and B, A has 75 tickets, which means A will receive 75% of the CPU time. Then B has 25 tickets, then B will receive 25% of CPU time. Okay, ticket means percentage of CPU, it should occupy. Okay. Uh, scheduler should uh, guarantee this percentage. Okay, so the algorithm also is very simple. It's a kind of a random algorithm. So we call it a, a lottery scheduling, okay? This is totally based on lottery, okay? So uh, the schedule scheduler also is a very, very uh, simple job here. Just to pick up a winning ticket, okay? So basically it will pick up the a process who that wins the ticket, wins the lottery, then just draw it, okay? The winning process and the draw it, okay? Okay, example, how to implement this, okay? So the, this is a concept here. It's a very simple idea here. You can see that suppose we have 100 tickets in total, okay? Then process A has 75 tickets, process B has 25 tickets. Then, if in total we have 100 tickets, in total we have 100 tickets, right? So this is the one implementation. So basically if process A has 75 tickets, then we can give this range, say a number from zero to 74 will be assigned to process A. And the number 75, between 75 to 99 will be assigned to process B. Okay, then we will do this uh, lottery. <laughs> lottery starts, okay? Run random number generation generator, right? So then normalize this number into the 100. Then basically based on this number, we obtain, for example, the first time we got 63. This random number we generate, right? 63 is between, zero to 74. So we will run A. Then second time, we run our random number generator. It generates 85. 85 is between 75 to 99. So we run B. As, as simple as, <laughs> as this, you can see. So, Every time we just use a random generator, generate a number between zero to 99. Then if this number is in zero to 74, then we will draw A. Then if this number is between, between 75 to 99 here, then we will B. So if our random number generation, gener generation process is really random. Then basically we can, after a long time period. So if you only run a few times, then basically you cannot guarantee it. 
But if this uh, random generation process is really random, if we run a, a relative long time, then it will follow this proportion. Because uh, you can see process A is from zero to 74, right? Process B is from 75 to 99. If the number is really random, then after a relative longer time, then we, we can see the percentage. Okay, so basically, uh, we will get uh, around 75%. B will get around 25%. Okay. Certainly here, the longer those two jobs compete, then the more likely they are to achieve the desired percentage. So if we only run a few times, because this is random, then we cannot guarantee this fairness. Okay, we cannot guarantee the percentage. Okay, so this is our basic um, technique here. Uh, but in reality, we may have uh, all different kinds of uh, um, uh, variation. For example, we can we can uh, have a, a global ticket. Then. In a local, for example, we assign this uh, uh, 100. Suppose in total we have 100, uh, we have 200 tickets. Then process A has 100, or process B has 100. Then basically, suppose in, inside the process, uh, in, we have a two user, user A and user B. Then user A has two process A1. Or A2, all, all we can see it, this also can be a process A, but we have two threads, A1 and A2. Then we can assign each uh, 15 in total because uh, process A has 100. But however, inside here, we can uh, make its number uh, become uh, larger, even for example, 500 and so on. So it doesn't matter, okay, because inside this is inside your system. It, it is only a number. You can use any number to represent. As long as you can, uh, finally, the system will look at this is uh, in total, we have 200 tickets. Okay, then we follow this two scatter, it's okay. Yeah. Another way is that we may, uh, a process may uh, temporarily uh, hand off some ticket to another process. So basically I, I, I say, okay, I have enough ticket. Okay, so give it, give to you, okay, something like that. Then ticket inflation. So a process may temporarily raise or lower the number of ticket. Uh, then uh, in this case, uh, maybe a process need more CPU time, it can boost his ticket or something like that. Okay, this is a summer implementation issue, but generally speaking, the idea is here. So in terms of implementation, this is very simple. Uh, basically, the best uh, this structure is a uh, list, okay? Uh, so why we want to have uh, this uh, list to implement this, you can think about. After we have a new, new job, then we can easily put this job into this list. Then we can increase the total ticket, okay? If we want to remove one job from the system, also it's very simple. We just pick up that uh, job we want to remove from the system, then remove this uh, a job. For example, suppose I want to uh, remove job B. So I just pick up this one, then I remove this. Then I look at, I will reduce the total ticket number. So basically I get the total ticket. Okay, for example, in this case, total ticket number is, um, uh, 400, so I remove 50, so it becomes 350. So this schedule, this algorithm is, uh, uh, this, this architecture is, uh, uh, is scalable. Basically, no matter how many process we have, you just uh, assign a ticket and then put it into this queue, put, put it into this list, then uh, we calculate total ticket, then we can, the algorithm can still be run. We don't need to change our algorithm. Then if we want to remove a, a job from a system, just remove it, then reduce the total ticket number. So uh, let's go through this simple implementation, okay, user list. 
that as we mentioned before, each job we have a ticket. Okay, each job we have ticket here. Then, uh, yeah, so let me just uh, erase this one. Okay. So each job we have, uh, for example, job A have 100 ticket, job B 50, job C 250. So uh, the, the algorithm is uh, first, every iteration we want to do scheduling, we just uh, have a counter. Okay. Then, uh, as you mentioned, we need a random generator. So here we can get the random number between zero and the total ticket. So total ticket, of course, is we have to look at the current all jobs, then put their ticket together, we get the total ticket. Okay. Then we go to our head here. Then you can see that if uh, uh, this is not the noun. We will go through this. This uh, we will in, inside this loop. We will go to each node, right? So when we go to each node, we will just uh, count counter. This is the in, initial value is zero. Then we will go to the current ticket. For example, in the beginning, we will go to job A. Then the counter is one hundred now. Okay. Then uh, if counter is greater than winner, winner actually is the random number we generate, right? Okay, so suppose the counter is greater than the winner, basically we break out. So suppose, okay, in this case, suppose I will get random number here. So our random number is 80. Suppose, okay, in the beginning, right? So winner is 18. Okay, so uh, current is a hat, current is hat here, right? So our counter is zero in the beginning, the current ticket, current ticket is this one. So because of this hat, right? So basically this is 80, then our counter right now is 80, right? Oh, sorry. Our current ticket is 100, sorry, okay, 100, right? Because ticket is 100, right? So then the counter is 100, right? Then the counter here is 100. Our winner is 80. So 100 is greater than 80. So we break out from this loop, which means we already find winner, okay? Which is job A. So job A will be scheduled. That's it, okay. <laughs> so next time, when we, when we want to do scheduling, we just run this algorithm again, again, right? Certainly we need to keep the total ticket. We need to keep the total ticket, right? So I noticed there are some questions, uh, but let me uh, continue to finish this part. I will go back and answer your question. Uh, this is an implementation. So, uh, to evaluate the fairness, we can we can look at this uh, matrix called unfairness. So basically, suppose we have two jobs. The time of first job complete divided by the time of the second job complete. Basically, we call it uh, unfairness. So if we have two jobs, each has running time ten. So first job finish at ten, second job finish twenty. Then this uh, and fairness is 0 0.5. So which this means it's not fair, okay? So if U is U close to one, then basically we see this is uh, fairness. Uh, the, the fairness, it, it's more fair, right? Something like that. Uh, but uh, see, this is a lottery uh, problem, this kind of problem. So. Uh, because this is a, the fairness is determined by random number. So if, uh, if running time is very short, you can see that so from this figure, okay, if we have two jobs, you can see if uh, the job length is less than 10, so it's not fair. However, if we're close to more than 100, then this is close to one. So basically that means it's more fair. So 
that's an issue related to the lattice furnace. So this is why we go to another algorithm. We want to have some uh, deterministic behavior uh, for this uh, algorithm. So before we go that, let me go back to answer some question related to this lottery uh, scattering. Yeah, so let me copy. Yes, uh, let me copy some question here. So please uh, continue to input uh, your question. Yeah. If you have any question, yeah, please uh, ask directly or uh, you can put into your question into the uh, chat box. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you guys for the response. So the first question is uh, why process A has multi right? <laughs> So it's uh, basically this is uh, determined by the system, right? This is determined by the system. So uh, in the beginning, we have to assign a ticket for each process. Yeah. So this uh, ticket uh, is determined. Um, I don't know. I I mean. You, you can use use this to represent the percentage you want this uh, process to occupy, right? So uh, maybe based on some estimate, uh, but, but the scheduler, so scheduler will guarantee this percentage, try his best to guarantee this percentage. But in terms of how to determine this one, this is determined by the system of the mean, right? Oh, or by the system designer. For example, OS designer may give you some, uh, uh, give you some by default numbers. If you don't put them, we will use default number. Yeah. So the question is why don't we run A three times and B one time and swap? So A run three fourths, three fourths of the time. Uh, so uh, we have to follow the algorithm, right? We have to, we have to follow our algorithm, the algorithm. So because, uh, because we want to guarantee the, guarantee the fairness. So you have to, you have to, we have to schedule based on the, the lottery. So that lottery is a random number we generate. And based on number, then we can do scattering, right? So if you don't follow it, then, <laughs> then we cannot guarantee this fairness, the certain percentage. Yeah, so I totally agree. One line said that uh, this ticket is like our currency. Yeah, I know, yeah. So yeah, I, but I think uh, our uh, currency uh, may have a very uh, more static trend, right? It always uh, inflation, right? So no matter how much you earn, then basically the inflation always keep, then your, your money is always become less value, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, jobs, so what jobs? I don't know, this is a question, yeah. So let, let me see more, maybe, maybe we have more question here. Yeah, I didn't copy the question. How to decide the number of ticket for each job? More tickets. Yeah, so more tickets or something. I, I don't know this question. 
then you, yeah, maybe you can input the question again. So how come I, I could not get those questions? Maybe it's because when I open this, uh, yeah, let, let me go back to go to the chat box. I do see some question here, but I could not copy the question. Uh, so one question is, uh, am I clicking into a wrong link? It's economic class. So what do you mean? <laughs> Come along. Are you, are you, oh, oh okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, I understand you now. Thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are talking about uh, fairness. Yeah, I, I think uh, we are computer scientists, right? So we can certainly provide some strategy to make uh, <laughs> our society better. But uh, I think uh, we have a similar issue here. So when we talk about this fairness-based uh, uh, scheduling, it's because our computer become more and more powerful. So during uh, the uh, we don't have a lot of resource during that time period. Maybe we always talk about the efficiency. Think about that. So we want to maximize, maximize the performance, right? Then we optimize turnaround time, we optimize the response time. However, when CPU is very powerful, then uh, more or less we should talk about fairness because we have enough uh, food enough uh, water, enough everything. However, if uh, we don't talk about fairness, then <laughs> basically still a lot of people own a lot of uh, um, those rich people, right? So they, they own too much. However, we our poor guy, right? So we are poor guys and we don't, we, we, don't, we have no food to eat, right? Some people don't have food to eat in this world. So it's not fair. So this is why, in computer science, we talk about this fairness, right? But uh, similar, this can be applied into our society. And so currently we should talk about fairness more uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, performance, right? Efficiency, right? Okay, so I somehow I could not copy those questions, right? So basically I think the question is that, uh, yeah, so the question is, so first question, how to decide the number of tickets for each job? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, this will be decided by the system admin. Or if you don't decide, then uh, operation designer will give you some default value, then you can utilize it. Yeah, so I think maybe that's a question. Uh, mainly talk about this, uh, how to decide, right? Okay, so uh, I hope I answer your question. Then if uh, not, then please uh, yeah, ask uh, directly or oh, input your question again, <laughs> sorry. Okay, let, let me continue. We still have 10 minutes, so I can finish the last topic here. So we talk about this uh, fairness. If uh, the job run, uh, running time is very short, then actually we cannot guarantee the fairness. Yeah, because uh, random number, right? So this is the lottery. So in a short time period, it's uh, really random. But in the long run, then we can get the percentage we want. Okay, so how to make it uh, deterministic, okay, that's why we introduced this new algorithm called stride scattering. So stride scattering is very simple. You can see here, this is kind of a, a implementation for our lottery scattering, uh, but uh, making it more deterministic. The idea is that for each process, we have a, a stride. So what is stride? So, Stride basically is 
uh, the is um, inversely proportional to the number of TK. Okay, so which means if I have a bigger ticket, my stride is uh, less, right? It's lower, right? So for example, uh, specifically we will give a large number, okay? Then divide, divide by the number of tickets of the process get the stride. So for example, given we have a 100 ticket and a 50 ticket, then a large number can be 10,000. Then stride A is 100 because of 1,000, uh, 10,000 divided by 100, so it's 100, right? 10,000 divided by 50, we have 200. So inward, inversely proportional to the uh, our ticket, okay? So the algorithm is very simple. You can see here, this algorithm is so simple. Uh, basically, we will always, from our queue, find the, uh, the process with the minimum pass. Okay, we call pass. Later, I will introduce this one, okay? Let's schedule this one. So which means if a process with the lowest path value, then we will pick up the process to run with the lowest path value, okay? Then after that, the current process of a process uh, equal to uh, current process plus current stride. Okay, so basically we, we end this number and the stride onto this uh, pass value, okay? Then insert this uh, uh, current process back into the queue, okay? So, so, so generally speaking, we have two op options related to the queue option. The first one, we have uh, this, uh, we remove the job with the minimum pass, minimum value from the queue, right? Then second job, then, then we schedule this to run the end of this value back into this pass value, then insert this back into the queue, okay? So let, let me show you one example you, you, you can see, uh, uh, you, you can understand it's better, okay? So in the beginning, suppose we have uh, three processes, a, B, C here. So in the beginning, pass value, you can see pass value here is zero, okay? Then uh, suppose stride for A is 100, stride of B is 200, stride of C is 40. Okay, remember, stride is inversely proportional to the ticket number. So which means if uh, a process has uh, lower uh, stride, then it should be scheduled uh, more often, relatively, right? Okay, so in the beginning, uh, pass value, all process pass value is zero, okay? Then who will run, then of course, if uh, we have to determine. So suppose we, we determine the order, okay? If uh, uh, a process, processes have the same pass value, then we will schedule uh, process A first, then B, then C, right? So we, we have to determine this, okay? So based on this one, we will schedule A first. <coughs> then after we run A, then we will end. Remember the, the algorithm here? When we schedule a particular process to run, then we will end the stride value into the pass value of this uh, process, okay? So uh, stride for A is 100. So pass value become 100. Pass value of A become 100, right? So this is a, the, after we schedule A, the second round, then at this moment, you can see that if we do scheduling, then uh, the minimum pass value is B and C, right? But uh, remember, if they have the same uh, value, our schedule, 
our priority order is A greater than B greater than C. So we, we schedule B, okay? Then similarly, after we schedule B, stride of B is 200. So we add 200 onto the pass value, okay? Then now, after this round, we do the scattering. Then we look at the pass value. C is C has smaller value. Then you can see we will schedule C. Then after that, we end this strand of C onto the pass value. So at this moment, uh, we have A is 100. B B's pass value is 200. C is C is 40. So uh, when we do scheduling, we will do we will schedule C because C has the smallest pass value, okay? Then continuously, we will run C again until at this moment, we run A, okay? Then, then continue. But uh, C, you can see here, they're very interesting. Uh, suppose our stride, a is 100, B is 200, C is 40. So relative speaking, because it's uh, inversely proportional to the ticket number. So, uh, you, so if uh, B is scheduled once, relatively speaking, we should schedule A twice, right? Do you agree? In order to be, in order to guarantee the CPU percentage, right? A should, uh, because, uh, because uh, this, uh, this uh, is uh, our stride, right? So if uh, we schedule B one time, then relatively speaking, uh, based on our stride, then A should be scheduled twice, right? Then C should be scheduled. This is 200, this is 40. So C should be scheduled five times, okay? So you can see this here. You can see B scheduled once, A scheduled twice, C scheduled five times. <laughs> so that's why we call it uh, a deterministic implementation for lottery algorithm, okay? But we do have an issue here. I, I, if, of course, be, before I continue for, the, for the, this issue, maybe I should ask you guys, is this clear? This stride scattering? I, I will talk about the issue next, uh, tomorrow. So, yeah. so is this clear for stride scattering? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so because you guys don't have any questions, so let, let me finish this part. So, but uh, see, you, you can think about one issue here. So suppose a new job enters the system because a new job has a pass value zero, right? Then other jobs, suppose I have some job running for a very long time. Then his pass value already become very huge. For example, at this moment, uh, the pass value, everyone, A, B, C, uh, 200, okay. Then I have a new job, E, come. E's pass value is zero, right? In the beginning, right? Then suppose his stride is 400, okay? Which means this guy should not be scheduled, okay? Very often compared to ABC. His stride is 400, is the, is the lowest priority guy, okay? in terms of a CPU percentage. However, his pass value is zero, right? So we'll pick up a E to run until we reach to, uh, I, I think maybe this number is a little bit too much, okay? So uh, suppose I put this uh, uh, 100, maybe is more reasonable, right? You can see if I put this into 100, then you can, so stride is 100, then you can see we will run E at this moment. If we come here, we will run E twice, then we can, we can continue to run others. But this number is too small, right? Suppose I put this 2000, how about? Think about that. 
if if after a while, then this pass value become two thousand already. Then e pass value is zero. Then e will dominate the whole system because e is pass value is too small. Initial value is zero. Then we will schedule e uh, a lot of time. Then reach to this number. Then we can continue. Yeah. So this is the way put the uh, this uh, claim here. Then how to solve it? Okay. So you can think about this, but uh, generally speaking, we may give uh, uh, we may not uh, make after uh, running some time we may not give the uh, initial value zero for a new job, right? So we may put the lowest pass value as a new job, something like that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got some questions here. Uh, so the the class ends right now. The lecture has been finished. Okay, because we already use our time. Sorry for a little bit uh, overrun. So, if you want to uh, go to our QA session, you can stay here. Uh, otherwise, you can leave. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let me let me first copy some question here. I hope I can copy question successfully this time. Clean up job task. New job, what is the, but what is the pass value, right? So yes, okay. So basically pass value is, uh, is a variable we define. We define uh, for each process, right? Then this, Initial value, yeah. I mean, if we don't change our algorithm, uh, initial value is zero. Okay, then after we schedule this process to run, his pass, we increase, we, 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 we increase uh, the stride of this process into the pass value. So in other words, pass equals to pass plus stride, okay? So after we schedule this process from, okay? I hope I answer your question, right? So you can look at the, that example. That example exactly show this process, this whole process. Let me schedule this process to run the end of the stride onto the pass value. So new job keep coming. Yeah, I think the question is that, so no, uh, that, that, that's a very good question. I think uh, Kim Lan asked this question, say Kim Lun asked the question that if we have new job coming, then if we don't have new reset mechanism, basically we may have the situation we discussed at the end of the lecture. You are right. Then basically, uh, yeah. Your approach is that at a particular time, we may say, okay, reset, right? After a new job comes, then everyone's pass value becomes zero. Or we can see that we can set the new job's uh, initial value as a minimum pass value of the system, right? So it depends on uh, which mechanism we use. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah, so yeah, this is also a very good question. What, what if the pass value exceeds the integer limit? Okay, so certainly at a particular moment, at a particular moment, over time, we should uh, reset, reset the pass value, right? So we don't, uh, we don't overflow the value. Yeah, so this is determined by us, you're right. This. Every, everything is determined by us, right? Pass value is determined by us. 
I mean, stride, stride is determined by us, right? So basically stride is determined by us. So you may say, so why? Because we determine, we determine the ticket, right? We determine ticket, ticket number, and the, the number, right? Large number, right? A large number, right? So we can determine the stride. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? I hope I answer your question. Let's see, if we cannot expect the running CPU, how can we determine? Uh, yeah, you have to do estimate, right? So the pass value is not determined by us. Pass value is determined by the stride. The stride is determined by the ticket number, right? Then, um, so the question is when will a process give out ticket? So when we create a process, we should assign a ticket to this process. If we cannot expect running time CPU usage, how can we determine? Okay, so yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, so you have to do the estimate here, but you have to give the ticket, right? Uh, you you see so here we we don't uh, here actually we don't need uh, we don't need to know the CPU because the ticket is used to represent the percentage of CPU usage. For example, we have. Uh, currently, we have a uh, uh, 100, for example, right? Then you just give the ticket number, that, that's okay. Then we, based on the total ticket number, then we determine the percentage of CPU. So we don't need to know how long this process uh, to execute it. We don't care about the execution time of a process. We only care about the percentage of the CPU usage. Do, do, do you understand what I, I'm talking about here? Huh? You think about this, they are different, right? See, we don't, we don't care the absolute number here. We only, we only care about, it. see, okay, I, I ask you, you give me 5%. Everybody should get 5% of CPU time. Uh, then this 5% CPU time maybe is totally different under the situation, the system situation. If we have so many processes, then this 5% maybe, maybe is different. Yeah. The execution time maybe, maybe is different. Yeah. But I still, I still occupy 5% of the total execution time. I, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I got one good question here. Uh, then how, uh, but why don't give out the ticket even? So I think uh, generally speaking, you can, you can do that. Yeah, basically, if you don't have any specific uh, uh, priority, then you can, Give the ticket evenly for each process. So this uh, we, we we can we can uh, guarantee that everyone has the same percentage of CPU usage to guarantee the fairness. Yeah, that that's definitely the one 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 method we can use. Yeah. But if you see that we may need more uh, ticket for a particular process, you you can you as a system the mean you can assign more. Um, ticket number for a particular process. So I, I think we are talking, see, basically, uh, I think we are talking about the principle, right? So in terms of a specific number, actually, uh, you have to, you, you, you need to like go to the specific situation, you can determine the number, right? So, but our idea here is very clear. 
say we want to guarantee the certain percentage. For example, one way is that I think one student mentioned that we can give evenly number. So for example, uh, if we want to maintain the total fairness, then everyone has the same ticket number, then we can guarantee, right? So basically we can guarantee everyone run the same. So if you say I need more, then you may adjust your process uh, ticket number. Then basically you can you may get a more CPU usage. Yeah. Okay, so uh yeah, I think uh, how to determine those numbers, specific number is not, uh, 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 frankly speaking, a uh, different system may have different approach, but uh, generally speaking, uh, we, can, we can give the even number for, the, for, for each process. Yeah, so uh, last question. Uh, then we have two questions here. So one question is related to the architecture. Let, let me copy those questions. Yeah. Hopefully, I can I can copy those questions. Yeah. Let me let me uh, somehow I could not find my. So let me reshare this one. Yeah, so uh, basically, basically we, we may have, uh, for the for the initial ticket, we may follow some simple principle. For example, evenly, right? Evenly distributed, evenly distributed. All processes, something like that, right? So uh, definitely we don't need to look at. So the idea here is that the idea is not not uh, to look at how many processes. That, that's that's the whole idea, right? We don't need to worry about how many processes in the system, then we can still guarantee this fairness, right? So that's the whole idea of create a ticket. So uh, yeah, this is a very good question. So in all scheduling methods we talk about, we assume we only have one process. Yes, so far, we assume we only have one process. So this is go to the tomorrow, tomorrow's topic. We'll talk about multiple scattering, multi-processor scattering, multiple process. Okay, so how about time slice in this method? Okay, so this is totally different method. So we have two different methods, right? So here we, we talk about fairness, right? Fairness based approach. So here we don't uh, optimize uh, turnaround time, response time. We only want to guarantee the fairness, right? So this one, totally different. Different from, uh, for example, multiple level feedback queue method, right? So they are totally different. There's no time slice here, okay? I hope I answer your question. Fairness in terms of what? Okay. Fairness in terms of CPU percentage, CPU percentage occupied. You assign a CPU percentage, then we can guarantee. It's it's a, see this is this percentage. Yeah, let, let me talk about this again. Yeah. So fairness. This is a very good question. So Basically, fundamentally, we have to understand what is the fairness, right? So guarantee what, right? So fairness 
represent a CPU percentage. Okay, this is a relative number, relative number, right? This is, this is not a absolute number. So basically we want to guarantee, you, you give me a ticket for this process. I will guarantee uh, the CPU percentage this process occupy is uh, close to this ticket. Yeah, so this is the fairness we talk about. Yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, I think uh, so one line, as I mentioned, this fairness is not related to the time. It's see if you see not related to time, it's it's uh, not fair, right? So so the fairness is not uh, directly right based on time. This uh, direct this is based on the percentage, right? CPU percentage. You think about that. However, in the end, it uh, it shows with a number. But uh, basically, we want to see that no matter how many process we have, then you see if I give you five tickets, then you occupy 5% of the CPU, right? Then in terms of absolute time you occupy, it depends on how many processes right now in the system, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter one process or um, many process, we just do scheduling, right? It doesn't matter how many process we have here. Right? Okay, so uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, we have uh, a lot of good discussion today. So uh, yeah, I will see you tomorrow. So how we to know when to switch our process? Yeah, uh, it depends on King Long, which, which one you are talking about? Fairness? After, after we schedule fairness, right? Yeah, so it's stride, right? Based on the stride, we just, uh, Step, schedule a process to run. Then uh, after this stride, then we schedule another run to run. Right? Huh? <clears throat> okay, I hope I answer your question based on the stride, right? How much time for each stride? Well, it, I think this is a, a depends on the system, right? So you, you can assign this time uh, uh, for this stride. Then you can uh, then follow this one after finish this stride, then you can draw next one and so on. Is that okay? Huh? Do we still have a time slice? Um, this is a good question, yeah. I think we still have a, uh, we still a time slice, uh, but this time slice will be as associated with our stride. Right, so generally speaking, this stride Yeah, I think this is a very good question. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so let me think about this question, okay? So maybe we can discuss this tomorrow. How about that? Huh? I, I didn't think about this question, so <laughs> I cannot answer you right now. Well, any other questions? 
Okay, then thank you guys. Uh, let's continue tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.